and we're back for part two. Right, so in this video, uh, what we're going to do now um, is we are going to be creating the second activity of the application where we actually have a countdown timer going off. Um, we're going to create that in a really basic form in this video, and then the next video we're going to make it pretty and we're going to add some extra little things like a ting sound and so on and so forth. So, the one thing I need to explain before we begin, and I didn't really explain in the last video, um, is the idea of an activity. Now, in Android, we use these things called activities, and typically an activity sort of represents one screen of an application. So, for example, if we bring up our emulator, we have our main activity here at the moment that just has our input and our button, and that's what gets launched when the application gets launched. And to understand why we use activities, you have to think about normal programs, desktop programs. Um, to give you a good example, if you've ever used a Java programming language, all Java programs start from a main method. And the main method is the, that single point of entry for the application. It's from that point that everything else in the application starts. The thing with Android and uh, mobile developing in, in, in general is that we might not necessarily want to start from the same position each time. So for example, we if we were just launching the app from the home screen, then maybe yeah, we want to launch to the, the home screen of our application, the main activity. But maybe we were launching the application from uh, a link uh, in an email, and maybe we wanted to have the application launch its email screen activity. So instead of launching to the main activity, then getting the user to navigate to the email activity where they could do some email stuff, you would instead just launch directly to the email activity, and that is called non-deterministic launching. So we can actually launch our application from more than one place. And that's the sort of central idea behind activities. So let's go ahead and now start creating our second activity. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the right and we're going to right click and click new. And we're going to click activity. And we're going to create just another basic activity like this. The reason you want to do it in the way I just showed you by right clicking and clicking new and creating um, activity is because Android Studio will handle some of the other configuration things surrounding creating an activity. And this is slightly less error prone, although there is a slight error that does sometimes occur when we do it this way. And if it happens, I'll show you how to fix it. So we're going to call this timer activity like that. And this is fine as it is at the moment. Just click finish. And we've got now got a new Kotlin file called timer activity over here. And we've got a whole host of new uh, files in the uh, layout section. We've got a, uh, the timer and we've got an activity for the timer as well. So the first thing we want to really do is launch this activity. How do we launch the activity? Well, what we're going to do, as I said in the previous video, we're going to take our button from our main activity. And what we're going to do, we take this button over here and we're going to launch the second activity with it. So the way we do that is if we look at our main activity, we've got this fab set on click listener. And what we're now going to do, instead of um, printing our seconds, we're actually just going to go ahead and launch our new activity. Okay, so how do we start our new activity? Well, the way we do that is we have to create something called an intent. Now, what an intent is, is it, it basically um, is a way of saying, here's what we would like to do. It is, as the name describes, an intent, an intention. So we can create one by using the val keyword. We say val, val means um, that it's a constant, which means we're not going to be reassigning it. So if you ever use JavaScript, it's very similar to the const keyword. Uh, it's similar, but not the same to, as final in Java. So we can say activity intent. And what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new intent and we pass it to this context. We have to import it, so just quickly import that. And we also have to pass in the class of the activity that we want to start. 
and we use a method reference to get the class and we also need to put the dot java here because essentially what's happening under the hood is we are using java and the start activity class that we want and the intent signature requires that we actually have the the java class it's slightly confusing given that we're using kotlin but just it's because kotlin is operating on top of the jvm and so on and so forth i won't get too into detail with that sort of stuff uh, just another note on val you can also do var which would mean that we could say activity intent you know five or something i, I think that might kick it off for us but we can reassign the value whereas if we, if we just type in val we can't reassign it accidentally so now let's create our activity like this so we're going to create our activity intent like that and then let's go ahead and uh, restart our application like this Okay, the app has restarted. So now what we're expecting is that when we click on our button that we have a new intent created. We, we view our new uh, blank timer activity. Go over here. We'll click on this button now. And oh, look at that. The timer activity shows up. So that's all working nice. That's all tickety-boo. Great. So the next thing we have to consider is how do we actually pass data? to act uh, across activities because this activity here that our timer activity has no concept of anything that occurs in this activity well we actually can do this very simply by using um, a map which is present inside of the intent objects so what we can do and it's crucial you do this before you start activity so we do this before start activity because otherwise we've already passed it to activity and I have done it in the past where for some reason I've I've put data in after here and it was a dumbass move to make. So just be aware of that. I'm not saying you're going to make that mistake but I have made it in the past. And what we can do is we can put something into the intent. So we can use the put extra method and we can pass it a, a string. Uh, so this is the, the value that we're going to use to get get the uh, data out of the map when it comes to being on the other side on the activity so in this case we're going to say we'll call it seconds and we're going to use our parse seconds um, method here and that is going to basically map out the seconds that the user passes to us in this activity in the main activity to a, the seconds value in the map in the intent that we pass to the activity my god that was a uh, that was a mouthful right so let's test that actually works we'll go to timer activity and what we're going to do is let's um, when we click the new button in the timer activity we'll print the line and we'll say we'll, we'll actually get the value from that map that we get in the intent so the way we do this is we say get intent like this and we want to put a question mark there because we might not actually that might not be uh, valid as we said earlier it might not be present so it could throw no point or exception then we want to type in get extras like that again question mark then we want to get the long because it is a long value which is keyed by seconds like that and so when we open this activity and then click on the button and we look in the run window we're expecting to see the seconds that we have imported uh, that we entered into the main activity so let's rerun re the application and see if that works okay so open the run window let that all connect up come to our emulator we'll put in a value let's say we're going to put in a value on a 15 click that click the button to create the new intent now notice nothing gets printed because we've removed that from the the code from the previous video click this button here and we can see that we actually get uh, 15 out so that is all working nicely so I think the thing for us to do now is to start messing around with the timer activity and putting some elements in there that we that we want um, and changing the icon again on the actual button because that's using the email one again so we need to go to our activity.timer like that and we can get rid of this get rid of android from here and do the same thing we did in the previous one so we've got our 
our icon over here. So that's IC access time like that. And we can see it's just changed. Great. So now let's add a, a text view element here so we can see a countdown that's going to be occurring. So we're going to say content uh, timer. We'll go to that one. Make sure on the design tab, find the text view. That should be one of the top ones you see. Drag it to the window like that. Let's give it a name. And in this case, I'm going to give it the uh, name timer view. What the hell is my keyboard doing? I have no idea this is going wrong. Okay, well, that's working. Do the same constraint thing again that we didn't previously. So we'll constrain it to the top, constrain it to the sides like this. There we go. Uh, let's also make the text a little bit bigger. So I'm going to say maybe we go to uh, 36 SP like that. That should be fine. Um, we don't want to have the text text view in there. In fact, we probably should just have. Um, zero zero dot colon zero zero that should be fine we also want to center it as well so find gravity in this list here not layout gravity just gravity uh, i'm looking in the complete wrong direction because i completely forgot there was this thing called the alphabet that has an order and i swear i'm missing it am i missing it i've just seen it where is it maybe it's down where has that got to I am totally blind right now. Ah, there's a reason. <laughs> I had, I, I wasn't clicked on the element. That's why I couldn't see gravity. I, I thought I was being daft there. And just click center like that. Click back onto our text here. And we can see that we've got this nice little element. And in fact, looking at this, I'm probably going to make this text a little bit bigger. So we can change it in the XML here. And we can change it to, let's say, uh, 72. That's probably OK. Uh, just a little thing to note here that it's moaning about us. So you can see it's highlighting it. Um, it's moaning that we've used a hard-coded string. Because if you remember from the previous video, I mentioned that there's this thing called um, the strings XML file here that we can define our string so that if we wanted to, say, for example, change the language of our application or display strings, are common across the application in many places and have one place to define it that we could use that um that's why it's moaning about us here like i say i'm not really going to get too into any of that sort of stuff because we're going to keep the things nice and simple here okay going back oh well i don't even know what i said there going back to our timer activity let's start and create the logic to actually do a countdown and we're gonna, what we're going to do here is we're going to do an infinite countdown. So if the user says, right, I'm going to be doing my yoga stretches for 60 seconds, right? We're going to assume that they're going to do one stretch for 60 seconds and then do another stretch 60 seconds after that. So the idea is that they do 60 seconds of stretching. They get some sort of ping sound so they know to change stretches. And then they have another 60 seconds until the next ping and so on and so forth. Okay. So it's going to be infinite until they tell us to stop. Then we're going to have a but we have another button that says stop. That's what's going to happen with that. So let's go ahead and create some of the logic that we need to actually create here. Now this is going to be the most codey looking thing we've done so far. So we're going to create um, a method. I'm going to call it uh, start workout because yoga is a workout. There we go. We're going to pass in uh, time in milliseconds. Now, you might be saying, Shane, we're getting the time off the users in seconds. Well, we're going to calculate the seconds. So like this. Oh, my God, he can't type. OK, type in long like that. So OK, so what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be using something that is provided um, by Android itself. And that is something called the countdown timer. So we don't actually do have to do a great deal ourselves, but we're going to do some stuff that's, that's useful anyway. So we'll create an object, call it countdown timer. And we may need to import that, although it might have just done it automatically for us. It has. We can get rid of that import as well. We're at it. So it's just imported countdown timer for us because it's nice like that. And we're going to pass in the time in milliseconds here. And we're also going to pass in a value for which we are going to tick. And for this, we want a second, 
bearing in mind it's in milliseconds, so a, a thousand. So this is our interval of how long we're going to actually each tick is going to take. So we're now going to have to override a function, two functions. One of them is going to be called on finish, and the other one is going to be called on tick. So start off by overriding the on tick one. So override function and then on tick like that. And we have to pass in um, a long. Um, it's given us this method. Uh, this is what Android Studio is saying. Look, we need to do this. We haven't done it yet. Um, while we're at it, let's quickly also um, create the override for unfinish. It's the same sort of thing. So we know that it's going to stop moaning about us to us now, and we can start actually creating our logic. So what we need to do is we need to create. Um, some of the time that we're going to be using. So we need to be creating the minutes from the seconds. So if, for example, the user entered 120 seconds, well, that's that's two minutes, quick maths. Um, so what we actually need to take is 120 and turn it into the value 0, 2, 0, 0. So how are we going to do that? So let's first start out by renaming this so it's sort of consistent and we know what it is. Anyone else reading our code will know what's going off. Let's first get our minutes remaining. So this is sort of very basic programming stuff. If you've ever read like a basic introduction to programming of any sort of stuff, uh, of any book like that, you will sort of know this sort of code. So we're going to take our time in milliseconds like this. Um, and we are going to divide it by 6,000 because uh, it's milliseconds and we want the minutes. Okay, uh, I'm actually also going to rename this variable because it's technically not true. So this is milliseconds. Um, until finish. So this is milliseconds until we, we finish here. So we're going to rename this here like that. Just so there's no confusion. Now we're going to get the seconds remaining. So type the seconds remaining. And we're going to do milliseconds until we finish modulus. So get the remainder that will be left, left over from the minutes. Okay. And then divide that by 1000 to get the, the seconds. So we're converting milliseconds back to seconds by dividing by 1000 there. We then want to actually create the strings that we're going to display. So the way we can do that is let's actually also create another um, method, a little function down here. We'll call it append zero. So we'll call it append zero like this. Pass it in our time. We'll return a string like this. We'll say val time string is equal to time to string. Okay, then we're going to say return if the time is less than 10, then we want to return. So basically what we're saying here is we're going to say, let's say the time is less than 10. So what could that be? That could be one all the way up to nine, right? So let's say it's nine. What we actually want to return in this case is zero nine, right? So it displays correctly. Otherwise, you'd have like one time. Sometimes it'd be displaying one digit. Sometimes it'd be displaying two digits if you were doing that sort of thing. So coming back to our timer activity over here, we've got the two digits. So we always want to make sure that we're consistently displaying uh, the zeros in the right place and, and so on and so forth, and nothing's moving around. So this is what this method is doing. So if time is less than ten, then what we're going to return is we're going to return um, zero. And then we can use a dollar sign to concatenate a string here and concatenate that time string. If it's not, then we'll just return the time string because that time string is two digits long and we don't need to return uh, a zero appended in front of it. So that's what we're going to do there. So now let's do this. We'll create our minutes up here and we'll say minutes is equal to append zero and then we'll pass in our minutes remaining like that. Do the same thing for seconds as well, and you guessed it, we're going to do a pen zero, and we're going to pass in the seconds remaining. Now let's create the actual text. So that text is going to be, we'll call it a timer text, like that. And this is going to be um, equal to the minutes, so 
we pass in those minutes like that with a uh, colon in between so put the colon and then we're going to pass in the seconds as well like this and then what we're going to do is we're going to actually take our the text that we have here and we're going to reset it with the value we've just provided and the way we do that is we just get that actual um, this element here and let's just check we actually have an ID we do have an ID on it here the ID is called time of view so we get time of view here and we're going to set the text so we're going to say time of view dot set text like that we also have to import that so alt enter if you're on a Mac we'll import that for you there you go and then we'll pass in the time of text brilliant so that should all work so just a quick overview of what we just created there what we created is we've got this function that's going to basically going to rehab occur every 1000 milliseconds so every second in other words until we've ran out of the this number of seconds we pass it so if we pass it five seconds it's going to go one go to the bottom two all up to five and then when it finishes it's going to go to on finish and then it's going to do something else okay so what it's doing it's getting the minutes that are remaining and getting the seconds that are remaining and then appending it to this timer text that's then getting set to the text in our view and that happens every second so every second we would expect that our timer updates with a new number okay um, we can't run that at the moment because we need to finish implementing the on finish method because otherwise it's just going to crash and really all we're doing in this on finish method is we're just going to say start workout and we're going to pass in time in milliseconds so this is never going to stop until we create a method that or which we create a button that's going to stop it okay so let's go ahead and change this at the moment so we need to change uh, this so when we click the button we actually start the workout so in order to do that we are going to get the seconds so we'll create a little variable for this we'll call it seconds and we'll say get intent like this Remember the question mark because it could be null. We don't want to throw any errors. Get extras. Again, question mark. We'll get a long. Like this. And we'll get the seconds. So we're basically doing what we've done in that print line below. I forgot we'd done that. So <laughs> I could have just copied and pasted that code. But you know, practice makes perfect. And I'm pretending I didn't actually forget that it was there. Even though I was blatantly looking at it. Then we want to check... If the seconds is null, it is not null, should I say. So I want to say if seconds whoops, is not null, like that, then what we want to do is we want to start the workout and pass those seconds to it. But actually, we want to create the milliseconds first, because we need a millisecond. Um, otherwise, we're just not going to do anything. Not the greatest of designs ever, but this is just you know how this is going to operate. So we're going to say val... Uh, milliseconds is equal to seconds multiplied by 1000 and then we're just going to say start workout and pass in those milliseconds like that so that's all gravy okay so now uh, I should also explain that the reason we have to check here that this isn't null is because what we've done is we've said well this intent could be null and this could be null we're also not guaranteed to get back along so for example I actually have typed that in wrong that should be seconds not second and probably some of you are screaming at me for for having typed it wrong um, so what would have happened in that case is that this would have brought back nothing which means this would have been null and then nothing would have happened if we try and like pass something that's null we're gonna have some errors that are gonna occur and it's all problematic so we need to actually make sure that we're passing a non null value because what we can also do is we could have also um, ignored this and it would have been an optional value. Then we'd have to change this and say this is optional. The problem is that this requires a long and not an optional long, which means that we have to would have to basically check that it's not null 
beforehand so we can make sure that it is actually a long slight aside there but let's go ahead and run the uh, application again and see what happens nice and speedy there so we'll go back to our little emulator on what we expect in here so let's define what we're expecting before we actually run it so we're expecting we put in some seconds we then press the second button on the new screen when we go to the new new timer activity we press the new time it's going to start counting down from whatever time we said and it's not going to stop so it's going to go from let's say five seconds we'll put in five seconds and it's going to go to zero and then it's going to go back to five seconds and it, again and again and again and again and again so let's click that pass it to the new activity we'll start the new activity so we start it on zero click that button and we should be expecting this to work but something's gone wrong so it's up to us to figure out what that is that's gone wrong there okay what has actually gone wrong and i've just seen it right here is that we are supposed to tell this um countdown timer to start so we're supposed to say dot start at the end that's all that's all that we were missing a ridiculous thing to be missing but obviously it doesn't know to start automatically so we need to tell the object hey can you start doing the countdown please that's what we need to say to it that's basically what we're saying so we'll try this again we'll say five click 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 oh my god it's working now there is a slight error there and then i've put a space here so let's take those spaces out uh, it's not going to change until we recompile oh it's gone to zero. Oh, and it's gone back to five. Oh, and it's gone to three two one zero five four oh it's missing four did it miss four then did it miss four what the hell okay i am back after a very brief interlude because it was missing four and i checked it it really was missing four now this is something i hadn't expected when i was creating this video uh, but it does turn out that this countdown timer isn't as precise as it would appear now the reason for this is that it it's not actually when we pass it in it's not necessarily going to be the exact numbers we expect we'll debug through it and i'll show you how we can actually find these problems when when these things occur so i'll teach you how to debug your android app in a second uh, but let's go ahead and, and fix it so what we need to do here is we need to create a new variable and this is a variable not a val because we're going to be reassigning this and we'll call it total seconds remaining Okay, and this is going to be a double, so 0.0, .0 .0, like that. And next what we need to do is we need to um, get uh, a value of rounded seconds because we, we basically need to round this up because when we pass this in to this on tick method, it's not going to necessarily be 5,000 if we passed in 5 seconds, for example. It might be slightly less than that, which is what's causing the weird problem. So let's round the seconds. So it's going to round them up in this case. So we do that. We say rounded seconds. Ooh, yeah, rounded seconds. I can't type as usual. There we go. I'm going to type in round. And we want to import the Kotlin math version um, with that takes a double like that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to pass in our time dot milliseconds uh, to double, like this. We'll divide that by one thousand to get our seconds back. Then we need to put an if statement in, and we need to enclose the whole thing here in an if statement. So we're going to say if the rounded seconds are not equal to the total seconds remaining, which they're not going to be. Because we start off with zero, and then as we go on, these these seconds are going to change. So they should never ever be equal. But we've rounded it, so we, we they they won't be equal. So then we can carry on doing stuff. I'll, I'll show you as we debug through this, so you'll see what's going off. Okay, so we need to enclose everything here in an if statement. In the if statement, so we'll take all of this and do that like so. Okay, and the next thing we need to do here is we need to take the total seconds remaining and give it the rounded seconds value like that so we pass it the rounded seconds value so this is now going to let's say be four so when we come in on the tick the next time this on tick is should be three after we've rounded it so it's not going to be equal then we'll, we'll carry on into the if statement 
So we'll set that like that. Um, then we need to get the milliseconds until we finish. Um, but we should probably just rename this here um, just to make things a little bit better. So then we'll call this millis until finish here. And we're going to say um, total seconds remaining times 1000. And then we also want to say to long because this is going to be a double like that. That's why we've got the brackets or parentheses. Um, and then say to long. And hopefully now if we run this again, uh, this should work. So we'll run it again. And then what we'll do after that is we will go through and debug the application so I can show you what was going wrong with this. Okay, so we'll put in five seconds again. And we'll do that. And we'll start it off five, four, three, two, one, zero. It doesn't go to zero now, it goes to five, which is actually what we want because it was going to zero last time. So it's it's called the off by one error if you've ever seen that before. So it goes to back to five, brilliant, that's perfectly fine. Um, and it's obviously not gonna stop because we haven't put in a stop button yet. But let's quickly um, debug this so we can see what's going wrong. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to have a look at this time in milliseconds value before it actually gets rounded. So I'm going to look at it on the first time. So if we if we put a debug point on, and the way we do this is we click um, in this little area between the numbers and the actual code, and we should get a red dot. And we're going to put that on line in my case, line 32, but it's where we assign um, the rounded seconds. I'm going to click the little bug icon here, and this is going to run our app in debug mode. So we'll run it in debug mode, and we'll just do the exact same thing again. And when we hit this point of the code, the breakpoint, it's going to um, it's going to stop. Have I clicked the wrong bit of code there? That, should, that looks like it was the right code. Let's, let's put it on the if statement instead. So we'll do this. Go over here. Click click and we've hit the debug point so the execution of the program is stopped while we're currently in the debug mode and we can see that this time in milliseconds value is actually not 5000 which it should be if we're actually talking about uh, five seconds in milliseconds so it's not actually as precise as we'd like so which is why we've had to round it um, so now you can see that we actually started off at what would essentially be four seconds after we've done all this this gubbins down here um, so now we need to actually round it to get uh, five seconds essentially so just an issue with precision it's just something to be aware of so we'll, we'll just we'll stop that debug program now okay now let's go and make our button return the user to the home screen the main activity um, when they click the button a second time so they want to reset their workout maybe they want to uh, start a new one or whatever so let's let's work out what we're going to do here so we're going to use the same button because we already have a button we don't need to create a new one there's no real point here so what we're going to do is we're going to um, create something called a click count. All it's going to be is literally a variable. So var click count, and it's going to start off um, with zero. We're going to initialize that value with zero, like this. And the first time we click this button, we are going to say click count plus plus. And obviously, the second time we click it, it's going to be plus plus as well, which means first time it goes to one, second time to two. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to check down here, we want to say if the click count is happens to be greater than or equal to two. Um, the reason we're saying greater than or equal to is because it could be that the, the user happens to smash the button more than once, like you should do with that like button. Way! <laughs> Sorry, that was a cheat joke. <laughs> that was a ridiculous joke. <laughs> um, and so they could, you know, it could be three or so on and so forth. So what we first want to do is we want to take the time of view um, and set the text back to zero, zero, just so it, it looks nice to the user, because if we click it the wrong time, it could sort of jump back and it would look a little bit weird and glitchy. So let's do that. Then, how do we get back to the main activity, I hear you ask? Well, remember, younglings, what we did last time, well, we created an activity intent, didn't we? So we'll create an activity intent this time, but this time we're going to create it going backwards. So how do we do that? We say intent, pass in this. Obviously, we need to import the intent again. So uh, Alt Enter if you're on a Mac, like that, or Option, whatever you want to call that key. And instead of obviously passing the timer activity, we're going to pass in the main activity class dot Java like that. 
um, because obviously we are in the timer activity and we want to go back to the main activity. So, I mean, we're not really going back to the main activity, we're going to a new activity that is the main activity. Just a slight thing to just, just note there. And then, of course, we can just say start activity and we'll pass in the activity in tent. Um, and that is all we have to do to make that work. So let's go ahead and uh, build that right now. And it's going to install successfully. So we'll go over to our little thing here. And we're going to put in, uh, you know, five seconds has been a good example for this time. And um, we'll do this. And we'll click the button. Oh, it's counting down. Let's click it again. And look at that. We've gone back to the main screen. Now let's test that nothing's persisted. So if I was to type in six, for example, or actually, better yet, uh, 120, we'll enter that. And we'll press the button. Shabam! Look at that. It's not retained any any information, so that it is starting a whole new activity. I was nearly said a whole new world then. Bloody hell. Right, so that's now all working nicely. So I think this video has gone on long enough. Um, in the next video, we're going to do a few things to make this look, app look a little bit more pretty. We're going to be adding sounds so that when we hit the zero, or you know, we, we finish the first iteration on the second iteration and so so forth, that we have a little uh, a sound pops up. Um, and we're also going to fix uh, one of the errors that occurs and perhaps more errors that occur. So, for example, right now, if I were to stop this and we were to not enter anything in here and we do it it would crash the application which is uh you know that's fun and uh, you can see down here it's actually uh, crashed it there's been an exception so we're going to handle that in the next video as well so hopefully you've enjoyed this video hopefully you've learned quite a lot um if you have any questions or anything i haven't been clear on and you want more information you can put a comment down below and i will try and answer all of them uh, so the next video will come in out shortly, so if you don't want to miss it, subscribe um, and hit the bell icon as well because YouTube doesn't like showing subscriptions to people who've subscribed to the channel, so for some reason you have to click the bell icon as well. I don't really know. Whatever. Cool. Right. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.